As you'll recall from the lecture on cranial nerves controlling the extraocular muscles, the cranial nerve 3 innervates almost all of the muscles that rotate the orb, rotate your eyeball, within the eye socket itself. The parasympathetic component of cranial nerve 3 projects to the, the constrictor pupillae muscle, and that is the muscle that constricts your pupil, because during rest and digest you want less light in, um, and so your pupil will constrict. It also innervates the ciliary muscles, and the ciliary muscles are tiny little muscles that attach to fibers that attach to your lens and allow for your lens to change shape to accommodate for near vision. So when you put your finger out in front of you and you focus on it and you bring it up, 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 and you can still focus on it, that's called accommodation. It's the ciliary muscles changing the shape of your lens and it's innervated by the parasympathetic or visceral motor component of cranial nerve three. Cranial nerve seven uh, carries parasympathetic information, visceral motor fibers, to the submandibular and sublingual glands, the lacrimal glands, and the mucosa of the palate and the nose. So anything in your face that runs or drips or is wet is going to be innervated by the parasympathetic component found in the facial nerve. The only exception to this is found in the next slide, and that's the parotid gland, which is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. The glossopharyngeal, as you remember um, from the lecture about the, the tongue and the larynx, is very complicated and it covers a whole bunch of different things. One, one skeletal muscle and some pharyngeal constrictors, but its parasympathetic component is the parotid gland. In the next section, uh, we'll, talk, we'll introduce and talk about the vagus nerve.